long as I'm president, America stands by our sacred commitment to our NATO allies, as they have stood by their commitments to us repeatedly. Putin and the whole world should know, if any adversary were to attack us, our NATO allies would back us. And if Putin were to attack a NATO ally, the United States will defend every inch of NATO territory. A fired up President Biden speaking out about NATO and Vladimir Putin in the wake of Alexei Navalny's death. Let's bring in the roundtable. Former DNC chair Donna Brazil, National Review editor Ramesh Panero, ABC News senior White House correspondent Selena Wang, and Politico senior columnist Jonathan Martin. So, Donna, I got to ask you about that was a fired up Joe Biden pushing back not just against Trump on NATO, but also the Republicans in the House for going on vacation before dealing with Ukraine. And, and you know, he repeated that again yesterday, saying, come back from vacation. After all, we have two government shutdowns looming on March 1st and I think March 8th, and the president is right to call Republicans back to work and say, let's finish the job. Actually, it was interesting, uh, uh, Selena, uh, Zelensky in Munich said dictators don't go on vacation. He's pretty attuned to this debate as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, even Zelensky is taking a swipe here at Congress. And the most fired up we heard Biden was saying, this is outrageous. How can you go on recess? But look, the reality is Congress is going in circles. We know that, according to sources, Biden, he has denied requests to meet with Johnson. He's saying we've already negotiated this, approve what's been in the Senate. If any of this, plus Navalny, makes a difference and pulling out of Avivika from Ukraine, if that makes a difference, is, is unclear. Meanwhile, uh, Jay Mart, uh, the um, former president of the United States, current Republican frontrunner, uh, is hawking golden tennis yes. shoes. Our great hustler in chief in the spirit of Buffalo Bill and P.T. Barnum uh, is now running for president while simultaneously selling golden shoes and uh, potentially looking for more cash to pay off civil civil uh, trials that he's now uh, on the hook for. Look, this is who Trump is. The American people know this is who he is. They don't seem bothered by it. At least half the country doesn't. So it shouldn't be a surprise. But you couldn't script somebody who is less interested, apparently, in trying to lock up the Republican primary. I mean, he's giving Nikki Hill Daily fodder day in, day out, his comments, his actions, his lack of commentary, not saying anything about Navalny. Right. The leader of one of our two parties in the most important country in the world doesn't say a word about the murder of a dissident in Russia uh, is extraordinary. And guess what, John? The Republican voters respond with a collective yawn. Ramesh, is that, is that going to change at all? Or I mean, is this, are, we like, are we locked in? Well, the trouble with responding with a yawn is there is, I think, going to be a question of enthusiasm. We've seen low turnout so far in the Republican contests, and a lot of Trump's voters, the new voters particularly that he's brought to the Republican Party, have not been regular voters. They need to actually be excited to turn out. Of course, that's going to be a problem on both sides this time. Yeah, I think, real fast, the Nikki Haley voter, to me, is perhaps one of the most important voters in the general election this fall. Whether it's 35 or 38 percent she gets in South Carolina next Saturday, how many of those voters nationwide, center-right, the kind of Bush Republican, where do they go? Do they grudgingly come back to Trump because they're, they're good party people, or do they sit it out, or do they vote for, for Biden grudgingly once again, like many of them did in 2020? That demographic is so important, and Trump yeah. right now is making fun of her. He's not trying to win over her voters. He's mocking her. Yeah. But she where has those money. Go? She has money, she but she stay. needs momentum. Yeah. Um, so far, Trump has, you know, he has 63 delegates. He needs 1,215. And we all know going forward after the, the next two contests in South Carolina and Michigan on the Republican side, uh, the map really favors Donald Trump. Why? Because their delegate rules, which if you get over 50 percent of the vote, you get all of the right. delegates. And, and in certain states afterwards, if you get 50 percent in a congressional district, yeah. again, the rules favor Donald Trump. She may have money, but without a message and momentum. But in the meantime, actually, the Biden camp is not there. They don't have any issues with Haley trading attacks on Trump. A lot of the arguments she makes is actually a very distilled version of the arguments they've been making against Trump. She sounds a, little like Biden, a lot like Biden on it's some of this kind of stuff. helping yeah. them, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but, but look, she, she refused to answer my question about whether or not she would still support Trump if he's the nominee. But what's interesting is, is she didn't say yes. I mean, I mean, she's not saying no, but she's already signed a pledge saying she would, and she's not reaffirming that. Yeah, and I think that it's 
obviously not an accident that she's sort of trying to straddle the issue like that, because a lot of her voters, the people who are now supporting her, who are excited about her candidacy, are anti-Trump voters. Right. But at the same time, she can't make any headway in what is essentially a pro-Trump party That's if right. she doesn't appeal to people who would think of that as an ultimate betrayal. There's I, like a 35 to 40 percent block of folks who will vote in GOP primaries who are not for Donald Trump. It's not enough remotely to get her a majority any time in any state, but it's a hell of a lot of votes for the general election, right? That's a good point, but at the same time, I think what Joe Biden did this past week is what people would like to see Joe Biden do every week. I mean, I love the interview with Charlemagne the God because he talked about the couch. Joe Biden is a traditional sofa. Right. I mean, Donald Tr Trump is a sectional with all kind of divisions. <laughs> so I think he needs to go out there and continue to hammer home on the message of what he has accomplished, but more importantly, what he hopes to do in the future. But Charlemagne's really worried that Trump can win this thing. Well, we need Charlemagne and many others like him who are influencers who can just go out there and tell the American people what's at stake, because he said his audience is America. But he was candid about Biden not being able to make the case himself, yeah. which is what a lot of Democrats say privately is he's got to have basically a bullpen by committee out there making this case for him every day, every week. You know, he's not going to the border yet still, Donna Biden hasn't, which is remarkable given the salience of the issue. And it's puzzling to me that he hasn't done that, especially when you've got this, you know, flotilla of, of you know, folks that you can bring with you down there to make the case that you're trying Trying but he made it to East Palestine, and he will make it to the border. But we shouldn't try to define the president by where he goes. We should define him by what he's doing on behalf of Trump. Well, well, no, right? He's got to make me... the case against Trump, not the case for himself. And that's tough, He yeah. wins this the more he makes it as a, re a and, referendum and, and, on Trump. And, 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 and let me get to it. I mean, there was a major development this week with the uh, indictment of the FBI informant <laughs> that had said... Uh, that, that Biden had been taking uh, bribes uh, related to, to Ukraine. The, the indictment said that this informant was lying. Um, now, let's remind everybody, this was a big part of the Republican case against Joe Biden. Take a listen. Even a trusted FBI informant has alleged a bribe to the Biden family. A highly credible FBI source alleges that Joe Biden received $5 million in exchange for pressuring for the firing of a Ukrainian prosecutor. We also found a Form 1023, an FBI form alleging Joe Biden took a bribe. Well, that Form 1023, Ramesh, was apparently a lie, at least uh, allegedly, according to uh, the former Republican uh, Trump-appointed uh, a U.S. attorney. So what, what's your sense? Do the Republicans now say never mind about impeaching Joe Biden? Uh, you know, I don't think that they say never mind about it, but I do think that beyond this embarrassing problem that they brought on themselves by going too far on this, they've got a math problem. There are only 219 House Republicans. They need to get a majority. And as we saw with the attempted, the first attempted impeachment of Mayorkas, and then they had to do a do-over, that's hard to get. And, and every Republican, even the Republicans who voted against impeachment, none of them are fans of Mayorkas. All of them thought he's been derelict in his duty, but they weren't able to get 100 percent. They have to get 100 percent. What was the reaction inside the White House to that? Look, I was just speaking to a White House official who says it's another big embarrassment for House GOP, and they say it's just the nail in a coffin to what they see as something that's already been dwindling. And it's been a nut and burger from day one, and unfortunately, they can't even add pickle relish and anything else because it's a nothing burger. The Republicans don't have policies. They don't really have a plan. This is going to go down in history as the least productive Congress in American history because they don't want to legislate. How, how does Johnson deal with this? He's got effectively a two-vote majority now. Well, he it's does. It's not just impeachment that's going to be the problem. Well, and if he brings up a standalone vote that includes aid for Ukraine, he's going to face the same challenge Kevin McCarthy did last year, which is a motion to vacate, which means throwing him out of his job. So it, I, I'm skeptical that he can do that. I think there's going to have to be some kind of legislative craftsmanship uh, to, to get the Ukraine uh, vote to the floor of the House without Johnson blessing it. That's going to be fascinating to see how, how that comes off. John, the GOP is basically two parties now. 
And you see this in the Senate roll call vote last week <laughs> on the aid bill, okay? You've got about 21 Republican senators, most of them over the age of 60, okay, who are from the Reagan era party, who of course are internationalists, they're mostly hawks. And it's a big divide with the younger wing of the party, which is much more Trumpy and isolationist. And you see that split. And you can also see it, by the way, in the support for Donald Trump. Look at that list of senators who voted for the, the uh, aid bill. How many are for Trump? Not a lot. But the, the House has a majority in name only. When you are small yes. and cohesive, you can run the House. When you are small and you are fractious, you cannot run the House. So you, you just can't run it as a partisan majority. Fractious, you don't have it. Indeed.